Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Victoria and today we're going to talk about acute stenosis of the larynx and dyspnea originating in the larynx. First, a short recap what is the larynx. It is located in the anterior part of the neck and it is part of the respiratory tract. Its functions include phonation, cough reflex and the protection of the lower respiratory tract. It can be divided in three parts the supraglottic part, the glottis and the infraglottic part. And it contains the vocal cords, the glottis and the larynx ventricles, which comprise the gl glottic space. So now we're going to talk about laryngeal stenosis. First I want to give you a definition. It is the narrowing of the airways and it can occur at any level, from the ep epiglottis down to the trachea. If the case is a narrowing at the vocal cords, then we speak about a glottic stenosis. If it's a narrowing below the vocal cords, then it's a subglottic stenosis. And also a narrowing can involve one or more levels of the larynx. There can be different causes, like for example congenital anomalies, but it can also be an acquired narrowing. There are many different factors that can cause a narrowing. For example, there are benign extrinsic compression factors like a thyroid goiter, mediastinal lymph adenopathy, like for example a tuberculosis, and also vascular anomalies. Then there are malignant extrinsic compression factors. Those are for example thyroid cancer, lung cancer, and lymphomas. There can also be a benign intrinsic narrowing at the level of the glottis. Those include bilateral vocal fold paralysis, sharp laryngeal trauma, foreign body inhalation, sarcoidosis, amyloidosis, infections, and also a congenital laryngeal stenosis. There are also benign intrinsic narrowing factors at level of the subglottis or the trachea. Those can be, for example, intubation or um, tracheostomy related, granulomatosis, amyloidosis, tracheomalacia, benign tumors, and also a tracheal trauma. Then there can be benign intrinsic narrowing factors at the level of the carina or the main bronchi. Those include granulomatosis, a foreign body, tuberculosis, or after photodynamic therapy. The last group of causes is the malignant intrinsic narrowing factors, which include head and neck cancers, primary tracheal cancers, erosive thyroid cancer, erosive esophageal cancer, and lung cancer. There are a few symptoms which can speak for a laryngeal stenosis, like a streeter in inhalation and exhalation, often accompanied with uh, dyspnea, also multiple episodes of croup in child age, increased breathing effort with pulling in the neck between or under the ribs, and the difficulty to perform physical activity. The voice is usually normal, but it can be changed in very severe cases. In children with subglottic stenosis, there are usually lung conditions underlying, such as bronchopulmonary dysplasia, also cardiac and neurological problems, or reflux and also swallowing and feeding disorders. Often significant symptoms do not develop until there is a 50 to 60 percent narrowing of the airways. The diagnosis is done by direct laryngoscopy or bronchoscopy and uh, endoscopy allows the grading by viewing of the lumen of the airways and seeing by how many percentages it is narrowed. Also it's possible to make an x-ray of the chest and trachea or a CT of the chest and neck to be able to image more of the airways and see if there's a dysplasia or a narrowing. The treatment depends on the type of stenosis. There are different options, like for example the tracheal dilation by use of a rigid bronchoscope, and this helps for a temporary dilation of the airways lasting up to six months. However, it has a fairly high mortality rate, so usually preferred is a tracheal resection and laryngotracheal reconstruction. So here anastomosis is done by end-to-end -end with or without laryngotracheal stenting 
and this is usually, currently at least, the best option for long-term results. And here the narrowed part of the trachea is removed and the ends are reconnected. Um, this is, however, only possible if the length of the narrowing is not greater than 5 cm, otherwise a stand has to be used to join the parts. It's also possible to perform a laser surgery and an endluminal stunting to basically uh, remove the parts that are narrowing the airways. Now I want to talk about our second topic, the laryngeal dyspnea. This is a dyspnea which is originating in the larynx and it may occur due to obstruction by a tumor, edema, infections, inflammatory processes, trauma, or also abnormal movement of the laryngeal structures. Like for example, if the vocal cords are absent or if there's a laryngospasm. It can occur due to foreign body obstruction and reflex paroxysmal coughing without signs of fever or anaphylaxis. This is a life-threatening emergency situation and there are different causes for it. It can be, as a first cause, the structural interference with the airflow due to anatomical abnormality, like for example in tumors, a kind of swelling or a congenital anatomical narrowing. Also the second cause is uh, abnormal motion of functioning of a laryngeal structure and those include for example vocal cord dysfunction, neurologic disorders of the vocal cords or vocal cord paralysis or as mentioned earlier also a laryngospasm. The symptoms for a dyspnea originating in the larynx are wheezing, worsening of symptoms by exercise, uh, inspiratory bradypnea, so a very slow breathing, and the intercostal and sous-sternal inspiratory depression. And important to mention is it can occur with or without a stridor. The treatment again depends on the severity of the symptoms and on their etiology. And usually the treatment is by racemic epinephrine aerosols, steroids and oxygenation. In presence of severe dyspnea, intubation after anesthetizing the patient might be necessary and then positive pressure ventilation is required. That's all for this video. I hope it was helpful and clear. If you have questions, you can post it in the comments. I will try to answer as soon as possible and I would be very happy if you would subscribe. Thank you very much. Thank you.